Hello, my name is Lewis. Today you will learn how the tools menu works. The rectangle selection tool is designed to select rectangular regions of the active layer. It is the most basic of the selection tools, but very commonly used. If you press the shift key before starting the selection, the resulting selection will be added to the existing one. Pressing the control key after starting your selection and holding it down until you are finished causes your starting point to be used as the center of the selected rectangle instead of a corner. Note that if you press the control key before starting to make the selection, the resulting selection will be subtracted from the existing selection. Pressing Ctrl plus Shift after starting your selection combines the two effects, giving you a square selection centered on your starting point. Note that pressing these keys before starting your selection intersects the resulting selection with the existing one. The ellipse selection tool is designed to select circular and elliptical regions from an image with high quality anti-aliasing if you want it. There are four modes you can also use. Replace the current selection. Add to the current selection. Subtract from the current selection. Intersect with the current selection. The free selection tool, or lasso, lets you create a selection by drawing it freehand with the pointer, while holding down the left mouse button, or, for a stylus, pressing it against the tablet. When you release the mouse button, the selection is closed by connecting the current pointer location to the start location, with a straight line. You can go outside the edge of the image display and come back in if you want to. The lasso is often a good tool to use for roughing in a selection. It is not so good for precise definition. Foreground Select This tool lets you extract the foreground from the active layer or from a selection. It is based on the SIOX method, Simple Interactive Object Extraction. Draw a line through the foreground, using the paintbrush, whose size can be changed in options. Draw a continuous line, in the selected foreground going over colors which will be kept for the extraction. The color used to draw the line is of no importance, not using the same color as foreground is better. Be careful not painting background pixels. Simply press enter when you have done to make the selection. The fuzzy select magic wand tool is designed to select areas of the current layer or image based on color similarity. When using this tool, it is very important to pick the right starting point. If you select the wrong spot, you might get something very different from what you want, or even the opposite. It starts selecting when you click at a spot in the image and expands outwards, like water flooding low-lying areas, selecting contiguous pixels, whose colors are similar to the starting pixel. You can control the threshold of similarity by dragging the mouse downward or to the right. The farther you drag it, the larger you get the selected region. And you can reduce the selection by dragging upwards or to the left. The Select by Color tool is designed to select areas of an image based on color similarity. It works a lot like the Fuzzy Select tool. Magic Wand. 
the main difference between them is that the magic wand selects contiguous regions, with all parts connected to the starting point by paths containing no large gaps, while the select by color tool selects all pixels that are sufficiently similar in color to the pixel you click on, regardless of where they are located. As with Fuzzy Tool, the selection starts as soon as you click, and the reference is the first clicked pixel. If you click and drag, you can change the threshold by the same way as with the Fuzzy Tool. The Intelligent Scissors tool is an interesting piece of equipment. It has some features in common with the lasso, some features in common with the path tool, and some features all its own. It is useful when you are trying to select a region defined by strong color changes at the edges. To use the scissors, you click to create a set of control nodes also referred to as anchors or control points at the edges of the region you are trying to select. GIMP has 21 layer modes. Layer modes are also sometimes called blending modes. Selecting a layer mode changes the appearance of the layer or image based on the layer or layers beneath it. If there is only one layer, the layer mode has no effect. There must therefore be at least two layers in the image to be able to use layer modes. You can set the layer mode in the mode menu in the layers dialog. GIMP uses the layer mode to determine how to combine each pixel in the top layer with the pixel in the same location in the layer below it. Normal mode is the default layer mode. The layer on top covers the layers below it. If you want to see anything below the top layer, when you use this mode, the layer must have some transparent areas. Dissolve mode dissolves the upper layer into the layer beneath it by drawing a random pattern of pixels in areas of partial transparency. It is useful as a layer mode, but it is also often useful as a painting mode. Lighten only mode compares each component of each pixel in the upper layer with the corresponding one in the lower layer and uses the larger value in the resulting image. Completely black layers have no effect on the final image and completely white layers result in a white image. Screen mode inverts the values of each of the visible pixels in the two layers of the image. The resulting image is usually brighter and sometimes washed out in appearance. The exceptions to this are a black layer, which does not change the other layer, and a white layer, which results in a white image. Darker colors in the image appear to be more transparent. Dodge mode in photography, dodging is a technique used in a dark room to decrease the exposure in particular areas of the image. This brings out details in the shadows. When used for this purpose, dodge may work best on grayscale images and with a painting tool, rather than as a layer mode. Addition mode is very simple. The pixel values of the upper and lower layers are added to each other. The resulting image is usually lighter. Darken only mode compares each component of each pixel in the upper layer with the corresponding one in the lower layer and uses the smaller value in the resulting image. Completely white layers have no effect on the final image and completely black layers result in a black image. Multiply mode multiplies the pixel values of the upper layer with those of the layer below it and then divides the result by 255. The result is usually a darker image. If either layer is white, the resulting image is the same as the other layer. If either layer is black, the resulting image is completely black. Burn mode. In photography, Burning is a technique used in a dark room to increase the exposure in particular areas of the image. 
This brings out details in the highlights. When used for this purpose, burn may work best on grayscale images and with a painting tool, rather than as a layer mode. Overlay mode. It darkens the image, but not as much as with multiply mode. Soft light is not related to hard light in anything but the name. But it does tend to make the edges softer, and the colors not so bright. It is similar to overlay mode. In some versions of GIMP, overlay mode and soft light mode are identical. Hard light mode is rather complicated, because the equation consists of two parts, one for darker colors, and one for brighter colors. If the pixel color of the upper layer is greater than 128, the layers are combined according to the first formula shown below. Otherwise, the pixel values of the upper and lower layers are multiplied together and multiplied by 2, then divided by 256. You might use this mode to combine two photographs and obtain bright colors and sharp edges. Difference mode subtracts the pixel value of the upper layer from that of the lower layer and then takes the absolute value of the result. No matter what the original two layers look like, the result looks rather odd. You can use it to invert elements of an image. Subtract mode subtracts the pixel values of the upper layer from the pixel values of the lower layer. The resulting image is normally darker. You might get a lot of black or near black in the resulting image. The equation can result in negative color values, so some of the dark colors may be set to the minimum value of zero. Grain extract mode is supposed to extract the film grain from a layer to produce a new layer that is pure grain, but it can also be useful for giving images an embossed appearance. It subtracts the pixel value of the upper layer from that of the lower layer, and adds 128. Grain Merge Mode merges a grain layer, possibly one created from the grain extract mode, into the current layer, leaving a grainy version of the original layer. It does just the opposite of grain extract. It adds the pixel values of the upper and lower layers together, and subtracts 128. Divide mode multiplies each pixel value in the lower layer by 256, and then divides that by the corresponding pixel value of the upper layer plus 1. The resulting image is often lighter, and sometimes looks burned out. Hue mode uses the hue of the upper layer and the saturation and value of the lower layer to form the resulting image. However, if the saturation of the upper layer is zero, the hue is taken from the lower layer, too. Saturation mode uses the saturation of the upper layer and the hue and value of the lower layer to form the resulting image. Color mode uses the hue and saturation of the upper layer and the value of the lower layer to form the resulting image. Value mode uses the value of the upper layer and the saturation and hue of the lower layer to form the resulting image. You can use this mode to reveal details in dark and light areas of an image without changing the saturation. Bucket Fill This tool fills a selection with the current foreground color. If you use Control plus click and use the Bucket tool, it will use the background color instead. Depending on how the tool options are set, the Bucket Fill tool will either fill the entire selection or only parts whose colors are similar to the point you click on. The tool options also affect the way transparency is handled. Blend This tool fills the selected area with a gradient blend of the foreground and background colors by default, but there are many options. To make a blend, 
Drag the cursor in the direction you want the gradient to go. And release the mouse button when you feel you have the right position and size of your blend. The softness of the blend depends on how far you drag the cursor. The shorter the drag distance, the sharper it will be. The pencil tool is used to draw freehand lines with a hard edge. The pencil and paintbrush are similar tools. The main difference between the two tools is that although both use the same type of brush, the pencil tool will not produce fuzzy edges, even with a very fuzzy brush. It does not even do anti-aliasing. Why would you want to work with such a crude tool? Perhaps the most important usages when working with very small images, such as icons, where you operate at a high zoom level and need to get every pixel exactly right. With the pencil tool, you can be confident that every pixel within the brush outline will be changed in exactly the way you expect. The paintbrush tool paints fuzzy brush strokes. All strokes are rendered using the current brush. Choose paintbrush then click one to many times the left mouse button to produce a fuzzy level. The eraser is used to remove areas of color from the current layer or from a selection of this layer. If the eraser is used on something that does not support transparency, a selection mask channel, a layer mask, or the background layer, if it lacks an alpha channel, then erasing will show the background color as displayed in the color area of the toolbox. In case of a mask, the selection will be modified. Otherwise, erasing will produce either partial or full transparency depending on the settings for the tool options. The airbrush tool emulates a traditional airbrush. This tool is suitable for painting soft areas of color. Press Ctrl keyboard to changes the airbrush to a color picker to smooth the clouds. Holding shift while clicking left mouse button will generate a straight line. Consecutive clicks will continue drawing straight lines that originate from the end of the last line. When this option is checked, two setting areas appear, quality and weight. You can change the default values to adapt them to your skill. Size adjustments controls the apparent width of the pen's nib with values that ranges from 0, very thin, to 20, very thick. Angle adjustments. This controls the apparent angle of the pen's nib relative to horizontal. Size sensitivities. This controls the size of the nib from minimum to maximum. Note that a size of 0 does not result in an above size 0, but rather an above minimum size. Tilt sensitivities. Controls the apparent tilt of the nib relative to horizontal. This control and the angle control described above are interrelated. Experimentation is the best means of learning how to use them. Speed sensitivities. This controls the effective size of the nib as a function of drawing speed. That is, as with a physical pen, the faster you draw, the narrower the line. There are three nib shapes to choose from, circle, square, and diamond. 
The geometry of the nib type can be adjusted by holding button 1 of the mouse on the small square at the center of the shape icon, and moving it around. The clone tool uses the current brush to copy from an image or pattern. It has many uses. One of the most important is to repair problem areas in digital photos by painting over them with pixel data from other areas. This technique takes a while to learn, but in the hands of a skilled user it is very powerful. Aspect Ratio determines the ratio between the height and the width of the brush. The slider is scaled from minus 20.00 to 20.00, with the default value set to 0.00. The negative value from 0.00 to minus 20 will narrow the height of the brush, while a positive value between 0.00 and 20.00 indicates the narrowing rate of the width of the brush angle option makes the brush turn around its center. This is visible if the brush is not circular or made from a rotated figure. The dynamics apply a more real feeling to the brush by connecting one or more of the brush parameters to the way of using the brush. You may for instance let the width of the pencil vary according to the speed of the stylus or the mouse. Make the color saturation depending on the stylus pressure. Make the color changing as the direction of the brush changes on the canvas and so on. You may choose among several presets or define your own. The dynamics are created to be used together with drawing tablets, but some are available using the mouse. Apply jitter. You know spacing and brush strokes. Strokes are made of successive brush marks which, when they are very near, seem to draw a continuous line. Here, instead of being aligned brush marks are scattered over a distance you can set with the amount slider. The heel tool was once described as the healing brush looks like a smart clone tool on steroids and indeed the healing tool is a close relative to the clone tool, but it is more smart to remove small failures in images. A typical usage is the removal of wrinkles in photographs. To do so, pixels are not simply copied from source to destination, but the area around the destination is taken into account before cloning is applied. This perspective clone tool allows you to clone according to the perspective you want. Let's use this tool to make disappear some cars in this image. When you press CTRL click it allows you to select a new clone source.
when the source is set and you press shift, you will see a thin line connecting the previously clicked point with the current pointer location. If you click again, while continuing to hold down the shift key, the tool will clone along this line. Particularly useful when cloning from a pattern. The Blur and Sharpen tool uses the current brush to locally blur or sharpen your image. Blurring with it can be useful if some element of your image stands out too much and you would like to soften it. Both blurring and sharpening work incrementally. Moving the brush repeatedly over an area will increase the effect with each additional pass. The rate control allows you to determine how quickly the modifications accumulate. The opacity control, however, can be used to limit the amount of blurring that can be produced by a single brush stroke, regardless of how many passes are made with it. The smudge tool uses the current brush to smudge colors on the active layer or a selection. It takes color in passing and uses it to mix it to the next colors it meets on a distance you can set. The Dodge or Burn tool uses the current brush to lighten or darken the colors in your image. The mode will determine which type of pixels are affected. The Align tool is useful to align the image layers with various image objects. When this tool is selected, the mouse pointer turns to a small hand. By clicking on an element of a layer in the image, you choose the layer which will be moved. This focalized layer has small squares and corners. With the Shift plus click, you can choose several layers to be aligned. Various buttons in the dialog allow you to select how the layer will be moved. And you can select the image object, other layer, selection, path, the selected layer will be aligned on. This object is called target. Align, relative to. This is the target. The image object the selected layer will be aligned on. First item. The first selected item. When selecting multiple layers holding the shift key, note that there is no first item when you select multiple layers using rubber banding. Image, the image is used as a target. Selection, the minimal rectangular region covering the active selection.
The Move tool is used to move layers, selections, paths, or guides. It works also on texts. The Crop tool is used to crop or clip an image. It works on all the layers of the image, visible and invisible. This tool is often used to remove borders or to eliminate unwanted areas to provide you with a more focused working area. It is also useful if you need a specific image size that does not match the original dimensions of your image. The Rotate tool is used to rotate the active layer, a selection, or a path. When you click on the image or the selection with this tool or rotation information dialog is opened. There, you can set the rotation axis, marked with a point, and the rotation angle. You can do the same by dragging the mouse pointer on the image or the rotation point. The Scale tool is used to scale layers, selections, or paths, the object. When you click on image with the tool the scaling information dialog box is opened, allowing to change separately width and height. At the same time a preview possibly with a grid or an outline, is superimposed on the object and handles appear on corners and borders that you can click and drag to change dimensions. A small circle appears at center of the preview allowing to move this preview. Shear tool is used to shift one part of an image, a layer, a selection, or a path to a direction, and the other part to the opposite direction. For instance, a horizontal shearing will shift the upper part to the right, and the lower part to the left. A rectangle becomes a diamond. This is not a rotation, the image is distorted. To use this tool after selecting, Click on the image or the selection. A grid is possibly superimposed and the shearing information dialog is opened. By dragging the mouse pointer on the image you distort the image horizontally or vertically according to the direction given to the pointer. When you are satisfied, click on the shear button in the info dialog to validate. The Perspective tool is used to change the perspective of the active layer content, of a selection content, or of a path. When you click on the image, according to the preview type you have selected, a rectangular frame, or a grid pops up around the selection, or around the whole layer, if there is no selection, with a handle on each of the four corners. By moving these handles by click, and drag, you can modify the perspective. At the same time, a transformation information pops up, which lets you valid the transformation. At the center of the element, a circle lets you move the element by click and drag. The Flip tool provides the ability to flip layers or selections, either horizontally or vertically. When a selection is flipped, a new layer with a floating selection is created. You can use this tool to create reflections. The Cage tool is a special transforming tool allowing you to select the transforming area by setting anchor points by freehand drawing similar to the way you do it with the free selection lasso tool. The tool adds nothing to the image until you confirm the transformation by pressing the Enter key. The Paths tool allows to create complex selections called Bezier Curves, a bit like Lasso, but with all the adaptability of vectorial curves. You can edit your curve, you can paint with your curve, or even save, import, and export the curve. You can also use paths to create geometrical figures.
The paths tool allows to create complex selections called Bezier curves, a bit like lasso, but with all the adaptability of vectorial curves. You can edit your curve, you can paint with your curve, or even save, import, and export the curve. You can also use paths to create geometrical figures. Select Paths tool, then click on a design to start your selection. Then click the Edit Radio button, or hold the Control key to close the selection and to adjust the selection. Hold Alt button to move the selection. When you have done press Enter or press the Selection from Path button. As an example, we colorize a little bit. The color picker tool is used to select a color on any image opened on your screen. By clicking a point on an image, you can change the active color to that which is located under the pointer. By default, the tool works on the active layer, but the sample merge option lets you grab the color as it is in the image, resulting of the combination of all layers. The zoom tool is used to change the zoom level of your working image. If you only click on the image, the zoom is applied to the whole image. But you can also click and drag the mouse pointer to create a zoom rectangle. Then, the action of this rectangle is better understood if the allow window resizing option is unchecked. You can see that the content of this rectangle will be enlarged or reduced so that its biggest dimension fit the corresponding dimension of the image window. Hold the control key to zoom out or release to zoom in. The measure tool is used to gain knowledge about pixel distances in your working image. By clicking and holding the mouse button, you can determine the angle and number of pixels between the point of click and where the mouse pointer is located. The information is displayed on the status bar or can also be displayed in the info window. Control plus alternate key combination and click on an endpoint creates a vertical and a horizontal guide. Control key pressed and click on an endpoint creates a horizontal guide. Alternate key and click on an endpoint creates a vertical guide. The text tool places text into an image. With GIMP 2.8, you can write your text directly on the canvas. No text editor is needed anymore, although you can still use it if you want by checking the Use Editor option in the Tool Options dialog. A text toolbar has been added which allows you to edit text in different ways, but you can still go on using the text option dialog to change the font, color, and size of your text, and justify it, interactively. Right-clicking on the frame opens a context menu that allows you to copy, cut, paste, load a text, 